Good. Um, okay. So the next speaker is Pasef Valod Levinsky from University of Utah, and he will talk about fuzzing loop optimizations in compilers for C++ and data parallel languages. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Pasef Levinsky. I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper about fuzzing loop optimizations in compilers for C++ and data parallel languages. It was written by me, Dmitry Babokin, and John Regeer. One might ask why we focus on testing loop optimizations. New loop optimizations inspired by recent advancement in AI and ML fields and new architectures with vector operation support increase compiler's complexity. Unfortunately, conventional testing methods are not able to keep up with it and often miss bugs. That is why we developed a new version of a generative compiler father called YARPGEM. Using it, we were able to detect 122 previously unknown errors in GCC, LLVM, ISPC, DPC++, SD, and Alive2. These errors are unrelated to the bugs that we reported in our UPSL 2020 paper. 42% of them were miscompilations. There are three key features that make YARPGEM so effective. The first one is a novel static and defined behavior avoidance mechanism. C family languages are infamous for their undefined behavior. For example, let's take a look at the code snippet on the left. Intel C++ compiler and Clang returned two different results for it. At first glance, it might look like one of them is wrong, but it turns out they're both correct. This program contains undefined behavior. The expression involves several reads from and writes to the same variable and their order is not defined by the C++ standard. In this case, the correct compiler can do whatever it wants. Therefore, if the test contains undefined behavior, the result of its execution is undetermined and useless. To avoid this, we developed an undefined behavior elimination mechanism. It is entirely static and happens during the generation process. We do not use any dynamic checks during the test execution, also known as wrapper functions. As a starting point, we used scalar undefined behavior awareness mechanism that we presented at UPSL 2020. Here is a brief overview of how it works. We use concrete value tracking and a simple interpreter to compute results of operations and report undefined behavior. If we detect it, we replace a faulty operation with a safe one. For example, in this case, we replaced addition, which caused signed overflow, with a subtraction. This method has proved itself to be very efficient, uh, so we decided to extend it to loops. The straightforward way to do it would be to simply unroll the loop and analyze every loop iteration. Unfortunately, this is computationally infeasible because the interpreter is significantly slower than the test execution. That is why we developed two different ways to extend this mechanism to loops. The first one validates only one iteration of the loop and ensures that the rest operate on the same input values. The output variables are separated from the input variables, so the input variables do not change their values. It means that all arithmetic expressions will be valid for all loop iterations. It can be seen as if you wrap a scalar code in a loop. The information that a loop operates on the same values is concealed in a separate compilation model, so compiler must reason about the general case. Of course, if the compiler performs linked time optimizations, we would need to be clever here, but for now we don't test such optimizations. This method allows us to reuse the existing undefined behavior avoidance mechanism for loops with minimal modifications. Unfortunately, it has one major downside. It does not provide any runtime diversity. Runtime diversity is important because some compilers use this information during the test execution to select between different versions of optimized code. To avoid that, we developed a second method to statically avoid a defined behavior. We split the iteration space of a loop into two independent sets. We chose odd even criterion for simplicity to do that. Next, we analyzed each expression for both sets. In case the expression is well defined for both of them, we don't need to do anything. But in the case when we detect undefined behavior in any of them, we eliminate it separately and use version in code to combine a resulting expression. 
This minimal runtime diversity is sufficient to test optimizations that rely on it. They usually check only its presence, but not its complexity, to select between different versions of optimized code. This method is one of the two research contributions of our paper. It allows us to statically eliminate undefined behavior while achieving runtime diversity with minimal overhead or expressiveness penalty. Overall, Yarjan generates tests that are guaranteed to comply with the language standard. Our second research contribution is a mechanism that allows us to target loop optimizations explicitly. Uh, this way, we can ensure that optimizations that we are interested in fire often enough. Uh, it is necessary because we cannot test optimizations that we cannot trigger. We refer to the collection of the techniques that allow us to do that as generation policies. In total, we developed 10 loop-specific generation policies with a total of 31 fine-grained control parameters for them. They are not mutually exclusive and can compose gracefully. Overall, the goal of the generation policies is to produce code that is likely to satisfy optimization prerequisites and trigger them. And now it's time to look closely at three loop-specific generation policies. Let's say we want to trigger a loop fusion. To do that, we need to have two consecutive loops with exactly the same iteration space and no dependencies. The odds of getting them are quite low if we rely on purely random generation. We introduced loop sequence as a first class element in our AR to eliminate this problem. It allows us to make synchronized decisions, such as the same iteration space, and shape the high level structure of the test. This is an example of a coarse grain generation policy that affects several statements at a time. The next example of loop specific generation policy is array access patterns. It works at the level of individual elements of arithmetic expression within a loop body. By careful choosing array subscript parameters, such as if you use constant or iterator, the order of iterators, and their relation to the surrounding loops, we can create all sorts of traversals that are common in real world applications. Uh, for example, if you use the same iterator in all dimensions, we will get a diagonal traversal of a matrix. In case when you use a constant in one of the dimensions, we will get an array slice. Another example of array access pattern is related to the order of iterators and their relation to the surrounding loops. By carefully selecting them, we can get all sorts of interesting traversals, including a column major one. These patterns are not mutually exclusive and can be combined to increase the expressiveness of gener generated code even further. And the final example of full specific generation policies is explicit support of stencils. They can be often found in various image processing and scientific applications, such as finite different methods. Stencil signature feature is multiple use of elements from the same array within a small region. Compilers are designed to optimize, to recognize and optimize it. Uh, for example, in this case, global value numbering from LLVM forwards array elements between loop iterations to minimize the number of loads. The straightforward translation of this code requires three loads per loop iteration, while the optimized version needs only one. We use stencil as a pattern, and when Yarbjorn creates it, it randomly chooses its properties, such as used arrays, affected dimensions, stride, and computations that tie all the elements of the stencil pattern together. This is an example of a medium grain generation policy that operates within a single expression but involves several array subscripts. As I mentioned earlier, loop generation policies are not mutually exclusive and can compose gracefully. For example, here you can see a fusible loop sequence inside a loop nest. The first one contains a column major and a diagonal traversal of one of the planes of a three-dimensional array. The second one demonstrates a combination of stencil and reduction. Next, we will talk about how we support multiple C family languages. When we discuss algorithms, we usually use high-level abstractions. For example, when I say matrix multiplication, you probably think about mathematical definition of it rather than how it is implemented in C++ or ASPC. These two code snippets look very different, but they perform the same task. This is how humans think about writing code, and Yarbrun tries to mimic it. We separate the test's essence from its form. We construct code in high-level AR and then lower it to the concrete syntaxes of the selected target language. 
uh, we can do it because, uh, because the rules for undefined behavior in C-based languages are similar. They share core language elements, and the difference between them are small enough to fit into the common uh, architecture of the project. Our high-level IR is mostly language agnostic and captures the information that is shared between multiple languages. Unfortunately, Yargen has some limitations. Some of them, like lack of floating point support, are open research questions. Others, for example, uh, like, uh, for example, lack of dynamic memory locations, are caused by limited engineering resources. And now it's time to talk about the results. The most important practical result is the number of reported bugs. In total, we were able to detect 122 previously unknown errors in multiple compilers. 42% of them were miscompilations. This slide it shows in which compiler components we were able to detect bugs. As you can see, the majority of them were detected in target-specific optimizations and various middle-end middle -end optimizing parts of the compiler. In fact, only one of the reported bugs was detected in the middle end. This is exactly what we are trying to achieve. We also analyzed the root cause of the reported bugs and identified the three most common ones. Missed current cases, such as special constants or back edges, is the first one. They happen when optimization simply forgets about their existence and often caused by typos. And the second one is caused by the usage of corrupted information. It happens when optimization silently invalidates analysis results, forcing subsequent optimizations to rely on incorrect assumptions. The underlying issue here is related to the co compiler performance and cache validity. Program analysis are computationally expensive, and compilers tend to perform them rarely and cache as many results as possible. The third one happens when an optimization preconditions are too weak. In general, optimization preconditions can be too strong or too weak. If preconditions are too strong, the optimizations will not fire when it's supposed to, and compiler developer will probably notice performance regression. If the preconditions are too weak, the optimizations will be applied in cases where it doesn't work. For example, it can be caused by missing checks for vector size or type mismatch. Such errors easily escape conventional testing methods and cause miscompilations in user code. As this project is open sourced and available online. You can also find the up-to-date list of reported bugs there. If you use it and it helps you to find bugs, please let us know. This keeps us motivated and helps us to publish papers. Uh, this research was partially sponsored by Intel, so I would like to thank them. I would also like to thank GCC and LLVM developers who fix bugs that we submit. Before we transition to the Q&A session, I have one quick note. Uh, I'm expecting to graduate in the upcoming fall, so if you think that this type of project is relevant to you or you know someone, please let me know. You can download see my, from my personal website and use this email to contact me. And now it's time for me to answer your questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Valo. Uh, any, any questions? If you send up the mic. Hi, Andre Lasko from King's College London. Did you target any specific optimizations specific to one of these compilers or just generic optimizations you expect all of them to implement? Uh, so we targeted uh, O0 and O3 optimization levels uh, because when you diverge from a standard optimization pipeline, of course, you can find more bugs, but compiler developers tend to ignore them. So we stayed within, uh, like within a well-defined uh, industry-accepted pipeline, optimization pipeline. Right, but I'm asking more, is there one compiler that maybe implements some specific optimizations that the others don't? No, I don't think well, it's like I'm not aware of any examples of that. Okay, thank you. Hi, great talk. Uh, Alexa okay. Van Haddam from Wellesley College. My main question is from the paper, uh, I saw that it mentioned that YARPGen, even this version, does not substantially improve coverage in terms of looking at the compiler itself. So what sort of loop-based optimizations do you think are missing just from looking at the compiler implementation? What are sort of the areas that this could be improved on to cover? Uh, I think floating point support is uh, the main limitation that Yarvin has that miss a lot of uh, loop optimizations. Um, also, this version um, does not support um, 
array um, or point arithmetic, so I think that can miss some optimizations. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jun. Thank you for your talk. Um, I wonder there was a specific class of box that um, especially appeared a lot in either LLVM or GCC. No, not really. Um, I think they are kind of, um, we target, loop, we target optimizing parts of the compiler, so um, we can, we find a lot of bugs in these components, but I don't think that you can define uh, like large classes of compiler bugs. There are common features, for example, unknown uh, loop ends that tend to trigger bugs. But uh, I think, yeah, that's it. Or you can, I think there are more information in the paper that talk about which compile, which test features uh, tend to trigger more bugs. Okay, thank you. Hey, Igor Vodiany from University of Manchester. So I have a question. So did you look at the inputs that cause the bugs? Or is it something that will be produced by the human when we write the code? Or are there like very specialized cases that trigger those bugs? No, this, some of the um, report bugs are surprisingly simple. For example, this is a bug in LVM that causes a miscompilation of our um, Skylake server. And as you can see, that is a very simple example that can easily be written by a human. Thank you. No more questions? Uh, maybe can I ask uh, one more question? The, yep. the, among the, uh, the bugs you mentioned, is, are they fixed or they are all confirmed the bugs? Or so for GCC, all the bugs that we reported either are fixed or assigned. For okay. LLVM, the situation is different because the LLVM tends to, um, right now they don't fix the bug as fast as GCC. So we have a backlog for LLVM. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank the, for the speaker. Okay. The session is now uh, finished on time. Okay, thank you all.